Greetings, everyone. It's Professor Fiore, and today we are going to talk about current mirrors. So current mirrors have a variety of applications. Typically, they would be used for the internal bias of things like operational amplifiers. For example, we would use a current mirror to set up the bias on the input stage differential amplifier. We also use what I would call a quasi current mirror for biasing class B power amplifiers. What I have right here on the screen is a simple idealized current mirror. And the basic idea follows first this half setting up a current and then the second half over here with the transistor mirroring that current. In other words, producing the same current. The load that we would be pulling current through, in other words, for this transistor would be in the position of ammeter number two. So for example, if this was biasing a differential amplifier in an op amp, right here is where we would connect up to the two emitters um, of the differential amplifier, right? the two transistors. So we basically program the current back here with R1, and then ideally T1 over here produces the same exact current. So here's basically the way it works. If we look at the first half, I have this resistor R1 and diode D1, and the voltage from the power supply, VCC, would have to split across them. D1, of course, being typically a silicon diode, right, would have about a 7 tenths of a volt drop across it, leaving the remaining 9.3 volts from the power supply to drop across to R1. Now, I've chosen some convenient numbers here. 9.3 volts across 9.3K will give us one milliamp of current, all right? Now, a small portion of that current will go off into the base of T1 and drive, of course, a current down through the load, here represented by ammeter 2. Well, the reality of the situation is, is the transconductance curve of D1 identical to the base emitter curve of, T2, of T1, excuse me? Um, if they're not, we're not going to get perfect mirroring action. In other words, we, we say that this diode is going to produce, you know, seven-tenths of a volt or thereabouts, but what's it really going to produce? You know, it, it might produce 0 0.673, volts. You know, I don't really know, but if there is an imperfect match between this curve, this current voltage curve, in this current voltage curve, then the resulting current out here will not be identical. Only when those two things are identical do we have that same current produced. In other words, a certain current down here will produce a specific voltage, forget about the approximated 0.7, but some specific voltage across this diode that is, of course, in parallel with the base emitter. So whatever this voltage is, that's what this voltage is. So if this current voltage curve is identical to this current voltage curve, since they have the same voltage, they must have the same current, hence the term current mirror. Now, what I've done here is I've just pulled out some sort of random devices that you could mimic in a lab, right? You could just grab a 2N3904 transistor and a 1N914 switching diode, plug them in and see what happens. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat, and you can probably guess, the curves on these two things do not match particularly well. Now, the match is going to be better than if you had a resistor over here. And this is why, for example, we use a, a diode bias, a sort of current mirror-ish, or what I would call a quasi-current mirror, to bias a Class B amplifier. Because we want something that has a better match for bias on the base emitter. You could use resistors to slightly turn these things on, but a diode works better. But the mirroring action is not perfect. So we can prove that just by doing a very quick DC analysis over here. Now, ammeter 1 is showing 1.01 milliamps, which is what we expected, right? We expected about 7 tenths here. So about 9.3 and 9.3K would give us 1 mil. However, we're not even seeing 200 microamps over here, right? So we know that the pair of devices over here do not match perfectly. Like I said, it's a better match over a wide range of voltages than if you use the resistor, but, you know, not really a mirror in true, true sense. Well, guess what? 
we wouldn't normally try to do this. We wouldn't go through, you know, diode after diode after diode to try to find one that matches a particular transistor. If we're doing an integrated circuit, the easy thing to do is to just make a pair of transistors. And if they're right next to each other, being on the same piece of silicon, their performance characteristics are going to match up really well. So we quote unquote, make a diode by simply creating a transistor and then shorting out the base collector junction. All that's left is the base emitter junction. In other words, we do this. All right. So I can get two transistors that are virtually identical. And by the way, in the simulator, they are identical. You can't get a better match. We're using the same exact model for these two transistors. So all we've done is shorted the base collector junction back here. So this is really just the base emitter. So I want this to perfectly match this, and it should. Right? If you look at this, you would say, yeah, OK. If these two devices are identical, then this base emitter curve should be identical to this base emitter curve. And I should get identical currents. In other words, the, the current through um, this meter and this meter, and meter two and three, should be identical. Whatever I programmed the current to be over here, which again, we would just say is 10 volts minus about 0.7 volts dropping across R1, I should get that same thing over here for the load. All right. So, you know, we can effectively program this by just changing the value of uh, R1. Now, by the way, before I continue, there is a, a really handy thing about this, which is in something like an op amp where you can have a power supply that varies. In other words, you might run an op amp on plus and minus 15 volts. You might run it on plus and minus 12, plus and minus 9, and so on and so forth, right? All depending on the internals, you know, what the, what the max and min values are. But here's the cool thing. Um, by having this configuration, if you were to, let's say, decrease this voltage, then the voltage that's available across R1 would also decrease meaning that the programmed current decreases, which means the current that's being drawn out here decreases. And if this, of course, is feeding other resistors, then those voltages across those resistors also decreases. In other words, the whole thing scales. So we don't wind up with the uh, circuit going into saturation if we wind up lowering the voltage um, on the, on the uh, supplies. So it becomes a, a more forgiving sort of circuit. We have a little bit more flexibility with power supplies. Anyway, let's go in and run a sim on this and see what we get for our currents. Is everything perfectly lined up? All right, so we got the one, roughly one mil that we expected on ammeter one, and we have um, a little bit less than that for ammeter two, which we would expect because some of this current has to go into the base of transistor number one. However, you know, we're getting about a mil on this side and about 1.2 mils on this side. So it's way better than what we saw before using a discrete diode. We're off by a little over 20% in this case, but it's not perfect. And that leads to the question, why not, right? I mean, these are identical devices. How come this doesn't match this? Or maybe they do match. But for some other weird reason, we're not getting the same, same current. It's clearly not because of the base current, right? Now, that was tiny, tiny percentage. But we're getting 20% over here compared to over here. So what is actually causing this? And I'll give you a moment to think about that. Dun, 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 dun. All right, what's your answer? Well, if you answered early effect, you're correct. The early effect is what causes this difference, right? So the early effect was named after James Early, and it's the effect that we see, for example, on a curve tracer with uh, a set of collector curves where the current, when we plot IC and VCE, those current curves are not perfectly flat. They tend to rise a bit. The current goes up as the VCE goes up. Not hugely, but there is an increase. Essentially what happens 
is as we have a reverse bias across the collector base region, when we increase that voltage, when we increase the reverse bias, which in this transistor is right around 9.3 volts, as we increase that voltage, the depletion region, the collector base depletion region gets bigger. And you can visualize that as sort of pushing in to the base, sort of invading the base. That makes the base narrower and as such reduces the recombination current. In other words, your beta goes up. And if the beta goes up, that means the collector and emitter currents are going to go up. And that's why we see this on this side, some 20% larger than what we have over here. All right, this transistor's collector base is shorted. It's zero volts. This transistor, in this case, is about, like I said, 9.3. So let's test that hypothesis. It's easy to do. If we were to lower this power supply so that the voltage available out here was decreased, we should get a better match. So I'm going to lower this to 5 volts. And to keep that current the same, because right, I want a level playing field here, right? I'm going to lower the resistance to 4.3K. So now it's going to be 5 minus 0.7, 4.3 volts over 4.3K. Still should get a milliamp, right? And remember last time we had... Um, just a smidge under, we had like 990 some odd microamps out here and just a smidge over one mil here. But out here we had over 1.2 mils. So let's see what happens. All right, that's what the theory predicts, right? All right, so we still have about one mil. That works fine. But look, we're much closer. Now we're only about 10% off rather than 20% off. So that's good. You know, we could go the other way, too. You know, we could say, well, this theory would also predict. And that's why we love theories, right? Because they predict things. Um, we can tell the future. So let's go the other way. This would say things should get worse. 15 volts with a 14.3K. Again, we should still get about a mil. Let's see what happens. So they still have about a mil. And you can see, okay, we're up to 1.3 mils now. So now we're 30% off. Right, so yeah, that definitely seems to be the reason. Let's bring back our uh, original values that we had here. So it's the early voltage, okay? The obvious answer then would be to somehow get these voltages to match, to get those collector base voltages to match. Um, well, the first guy to come up with a solution to this, um, this was back in the late 60s, I think, maybe early 70s, I forget, probably the late 60s, um, was a guy named George Wilson, and he came up with a three-transistor version of this that looks like so. So what we have is here on the bottom, we actually have a current mirror that drives the upper section. So again, T3 over here is a diode. So what ha ends up happening is... This transistor, T2, should match or mirror the current established over here. This essentially pulls the current down through T1. So again, our load is up here. So I haven't changed anything up here. We've just sort of rearranged what's going on down here with our current mirror. Now, when we look at T2, this collector goes back to this base. End result... This is locked in at essentially, uh, well, we got a short here and uh, one VBE over here, all right? So this is a much, much better situation. Um, this is kind of like taking the power supply, the little trick I did last time where I lowered this to five volts and, uh, you know, this was uh, 4.3K. It'd be like lowering this down to like a volt, all right? But that becomes impractical. Um, you know, trying to get accurate currents and whatnot. So this is a much better situation. You're keeping this potential down at uh, roughly whatever this is. In other words, 0.7 volts. So let's give this a let's give this a run. All right. So here's our milliamp again. Now this has has in fact dropped. I kept this at 9.3. Um, we really should, if we still wanted a milliamp, we would have to lower this down um, a little bit more because now we really have um, a slightly different situation as far as the, the VBE drops is concerned. But 
Nonetheless, I'm really just interested in what the percentage changes are. If you want to do a sim on this, um, you can, like I said, you can just uh, lower R1 here a little bit and reprogram this back to uh, 1 milliamp. All right. Anyway, not to digress. So we can see I've got 934 microamps here, just a little under a mil. Same thing down here. All right. 935. And look how well we're doing over here on the load. Right. So before we were off by 20 percent here, we're going from 934 to 922. So it's not perfect. Right. It's not perfect. But, you know, we're only off by about 12 microamps out of nearly a thousand out of, you know, 930. So we've really managed to bring this thing down. And it's really the only the addition of one more transistor. All right. The obvious question is, can I do even better than that? And the answer is, yeah, we can do we can do one better, which is. If I can get this drop to be exactly the same as this drop, in other words, to get the collector base to be identical, then we should have a really, really good match. So how do I do that? Well, you know, right now it's one VBE above. It's essentially equal to this VBE above what this collector is, right? Because, you know, this collector and this base are the same and this base and this base are the same. So, you know, this is an emitter to base rise and that's essentially the same potential we have here. Well, let's insert something right here to take care of that. And what would that be? Why it would be another diode, all right? So this will get rid of or match, might be a better word, this VBE potential over here. In other words, this collector is gonna be at the same potential as this collector, the bases are the same. So now the current matching should be fantastic. Let's see what we get. All right, so there's our 934 we had last time, 935, 935, 936. Oh, this is great, All right? We're off by less than two microamps out of 900 plus. So that's, we're down around like a quarter of a percent in terms of matching, right? In terms of how close we can get, All right? So that works really well. So this, this would be a typical kind of uh, current mirror that you would use for you know, a high accuracy bias. And again, this is how it would be made. You would literally have four transistors. You'd short the base collector of two of them to turn them into diodes, essentially. And off you go, right? So your load is out here. So like I said, if this was an op amp, we had a differential amplifier. The two emitters would be up here. We'd connect this off and off we would go for our current, all right? You know, and just for fun's sake, like I said, we could just turn around over here and um, you know, change the resistor value just to show you the, the programming on this, how this is going to work. And I'm just going to put in uh, 8.6K. All right. And how we now are able to control the current when whatever we program back here is reflected or mirrored over here. All right. I know it looks a little busy. We got these funky looking transistors that are shorted. But in your mind, just think diodes, 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 diodes. All right. So let's try this one. Oops. There's our mill. All right. So, you know, as you probably guessed, we were going to need two VBEs, two approximate VBEs. And there we are back at our one mil. So 1.01 mil and our load 1.012 mils. All right. So we're right on. Right, that works really well. We've accomplished a little bit. All right, so hope you've been able to kind of absorb all of this. If you have any questions, ask in the comments, and I'll see you next time.